Man, when I think of my premium tool stack for content creation, I'm talking about tools that I happily pay the recurring monthly or annual fee on because they provide everything I need to write and create videos. But that got me thinking, if web developers started to shift their efforts to building tools, whether websites for the browsers or more phone apps that target creators, then this would be one way to raise your value bulletproof encoders against the recession. Let's shift gears. The creator economy isn't going anywhere anytime soon, at least not until deep fakes and AI technology sophisticates where it produces more of the AI rappers we seen like this monstrosity. Yikes. Until that time comes, this is the opportunity for everyone to flourish. And if content creators are putting themselves in these positions, then that means the opportunity for web developers is extremely high as well. See, content creators need tools that will allow them to compete at a high level as AI technology continues to grow at exponential levels now with the release of ChatGPT back in November. Now, what I mean by this is content creators have to produce not only high quality media, but they must be able to pump and dump this stuff out at the speed of light, sound, vibrations, all of that. As a content creator myself, the tools that I gladly pay in annual or monthly subscriptions are as follows. Number one, the teleprompter app. This app, this app right here, <laughs> allows me to utilize the front of my iPhone where text runs near the eye of the camera. So it's scrolling like right here, even as I'm talking to you right now. You can't really tell because I've developed the skill set to actually talk without looking like I'm actually reading. So in a nutshell, it captures me speaking, making eye contact with the audience. It's a very, very brilliant app in my opinion. Now with this, I'm able to write scripts quickly, either reading verbatim or going off script to provide additional insight to what I've written. Now I understand scripting isn't for everyone, but if you learn how to talk your scripts as if you're having a conversation rather than reading it, then that's where you're going to experience the most success. It's a skill that I had to learn if I was ever going to use it and be successful at it myself. The most important thing the teleprompter app does is it allows me to stick to the point of what my videos are about while also not having the ums and other what's called interrupting gestures. Since using it, my watch time has gradually increased as I've learned what to do and what not to do when speaking in these videos. Next is InShot, which was initially, I think, built for Instagram specifically, but since then it's just your it's just a really great app for editing videos on your iPhone. InShot is my premier video editor on my iPhone that I pay $14.99 annually to use all of its features. It's simple enough to use, but has way more depth than functionality than iMovie on mobile ever could have had. Man, I use things like keyframes to create custom animations with my footage, various filters and overlays, text animations, multi-layer footage ability, and even if it does appear to be linear. InShot is more than just an app to add text over and under a video's black space area, as you would see on Facebook and Instagram. In my opinion, it's a perfectly balanced app for anyone trying to edit and produce their film on the go. Grammarly takes the number three spot as we see in the commercials, but it's a reason why the marketing is so annoyingly frequent. And to be frank, quite frank with you, that marketing has worked miracles on me. And once I actually caved into the marketing from Grammarly, I found out that it's a powerhouse when it comes to having my own personal editor revisionist for all my writing, whether it's for articles, video essays, books, and talking head scripts much like this one that I'm using. Now, at first, Grammarly's incessant marketing, I would just blow it off as just some glorified spell checker tech fad. But when my wife purchased a subscription for her graduate studies, I decided to give it a try to see if it lived up to the hype. And I, I, I gotta say again, I was, I was blown away by it. So when my wife defended her dissertation and was done with school, I told her, uh, no, we can't cancel this. We need this. Grammarly is a must to keep this a paying subscription monthly or quarterly or whenever we're paying for it. Now she looked at me crazy, but I didn't care. Since shelling money out for the subscriptions, I've written with more confidence, knowing I have the additional assistance to review my work before publishing it. TubeBuddy is also another creator tool I use for keyword research on what people are looking for, A and B testing for thumbnails, title analyzers, and other data that helps me to become a better YouTuber. 
Now I'm gonna say this, and this is gonna sound weird, but Screencast Omatic, that's my dog right there. That's my dog. <laughs> Man, when it comes to creating things such as reaction videos and online video courses for an inexpensive annual price, you can't beat Screencast-O-Matic. Now, this tool I've been using as a content creator since 2018 and is by far the biggest, most used resource in my toolbox. This alone has helped my channel grow doing video breakdowns, creating online courses for Gumroad, reacting to other content on other channels, website reviews, and so much more. However, this usefulness has all been from the desktop. Now, while there is a mobile app available, it's not unique or flexible enough to where I could switch from my iPhone's built-in screen recorder to gauge content. And this is where the opportunity for you as a web developer or app developer actually comes in. The opportunity exists for you to create a screen recording app that will allow you multiple camera options to show your face next to the footage you're reacting to without all the complicated configuration setups. Now, you may hate this example that I'm about to get, I'm about to give, but I want you to think Derek Jackson circa 2016, 2015, 2016, 2017 in those regards. Now, let's set his antics aside for a second. I want you to focus on when he would just one side of him, he would just be looking at the video or pretending like I guess he's looking at footage from a video where he'll just be staring and the footage on the left hand side is actually playing. But what I guess he's probably doing, he's probably doing it from iMovie. If he was using an iPhone camera, he would just pretend like he's watching a video and then post-production just split screen it and put the other footage next to it and just time his editing to where it looks like he's actually watching it but he's really not now this is where i actually say the opportunity exists for you because in real time if you can actually develop an app where you don't actually have to do all that post-production and you can really in real time actually look at the footage and it looks very natural and, and seamless in your reactions that's going to be a huge, huge money maker for you if you're able to develop that type of screen recording software for the phone app. It doesn't exist with screencast Omatic on your iPhone, at least not in the way that I can actually do it. See, on desktop, I had reason to leave my Mac Mini's QuickTime recorder for screencast Omatic because it's very bare bones and limited. But with screencast Omatic on a desktop, like I said earlier, I can draw things in real time while talking to people, giving it instructions and allows post-production giving you its own editor with all these features and effects. There's so much flexibility. The company with their own developers are leaving money on the table, creating an opportunity for new developers to build an app that eliminates the need for a StreamYard or an OBS to do reaction videos effectively on the go. There's a huge chance for any coder that's hungry to really get money solving this problem. Next up is service software that I, I continue to spread the gospel about quite a bit even more so on this channel and that is Uscreen. Uscreen is video hosting streaming software that provides membership services for video creators who want to take their premium services to the next level. The founder has a team of software developers who has created an all-in-one tool set not just for content creators but other web developers as well who if they wanted to make a living just off of Uscreen's infrastructure they can do that. Uscreen Steams operates on Shopify's liquid code, so if you're a Shopify developer, then Uscreen can easily fall under your service provider belt. So those cold days and nights, those Shopify clients are running low, you can look for Uscreen content creators who are in need of special features, plugins, customizations for their themes within Uscreen's platform. Or you can create your own Uscreen's themes and sell those to clients Granted, you are going to do the configuring for them. Uscreen and all their charity has allowed full customization access to not only its paying content creators, but developers who would like to extend their labor. Nonetheless, Uscreen is a hosting tool created for content creators as a premium service so they can offer paid subscriptions to their viewers, readers, or listeners for exclusive premium content. I have personally helped several people configure and plan their Uscreen business model from their content strategy to simple theme designs. These are business people and full-time creators who had the capital to invest in the membership platform and audience base that was ready and willing to pay for paid content by these creators. Man, these free platforms today, they're, they're just unpredictable and their censorship limiting creatives to PG content, making a place like YouTube, for example, seem like a Where's Waldo amusement park. The YouTuber Moist Critical actually just released a video talking about a lot of YouTube's 
terms of service changes but in terms of the profanity which i'm not a big fan of using profanity anyway so that didn't really matter to me but just take an idea and concept that youtube has really kind of honed it down or trying to limit monetization i mean that that gives it even more reason for you to try to jump off and find something to where you can get consistent monetization and you actually control the flow of that monetization and guide how your audience is going to operate so in cases like this it creates a huge need for using something like uscreen i'll leave a link in a pinned comment below it will be my affiliate link so i will get a commission i will be upfront about that but i can't sing its praises enough because i've seen it solve these problems if you have content that will suffer from restrictions and severe editing and needs to be consumed in its original format and you desire compensation for the work that went into producing it then uscreen will definitely help you solve that problem because of the success I have had serving people and configuring their accounts, customizing their themes and creating a start to finish video course, I've decided to become an affiliate for them. They truly fill the gap on helping video creators earn predictable, consistent income without the volatility that could come from these partner programs. I completely co-sign what they're doing. Now, there are so many other apps and website subscriptions that I've invested in, but these are a notable few that I use on a daily basis. Speaking now from the place of a web developer myself, I wouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. My focus right now is focused more on writing and video creation, but if I had the time, I would simply look at the tools that's out there, study them, and see how can you be different or solve a problem that the tech just isn't solving. For example, I would use my JavaScript expertise to create a website or app that helps to enhance the iPhone's speech-to-text function that makes speaking up video dialogue more accurate, especially when people are speaking at a natural place, excuse me, pace, that can be a bit too fast for the iPhone speech to text function alone. Another idea is to create a YouTube add-on that allows captions to be easily added to a shorts clip when making shorts inside the YouTube ecosystem. The problem right now is that you have to manually add these captions as in-screen text from the shorts editor that can be a bit cumbersome, at least from my experience. With the rise of AI and things becoming more automated, the goal isn't to compete with this emerging tech, but to help human creators produce co quality content at a much faster pace at making content creation easier and more convenient. My point is this, the less you can have content creators do to produce more, they will gladly pay monthly and annual fees to compete in today's market. As web developers, this is a prime opportunity for you to insert yourself in this field and build those problem solving tools. If you're a web developer interested in pivoting to help the helping the creator economy, but you only know HTML and CSS, then that's not a problem either. Believe it or not, there's a lot you can do with HTML and CSS alone. And I talk about five ways that you can use that coding knowledge to earn a good living or just make some additional funds right here in this video.